Rebuilding a large Clarkson single-cylinder vertical steam engine, part 3. And this is dismantling the engine. And I'm starting this process by removing the top cylinder cover, which is really good fun because it's lock nutted on all the way. Even when I separate the lock nuts by using two spanners, some of the nuts are quite tight and the studs are coming out anyway, which is a good thing because I want them to come out because they're a bit too long. One thing's for certain, when the studs go back into the cylinder, they're going to go back in with some Loctite to hold them in a fixed position, and there won't be any lock nuts. In this clip I'm using my incredibly blunt craft knife, and you can see why it's blunt, to loosen the cylinder cover. The cover is not tight onto the cylinder itself, it's just tight on the studs. And here I'm using a screwdriver to further lever the cover off the studs. Again, with a lot of steam engines that I work on, this one is puzzling me. Parts of it are thrown together, and other parts of it are well built. Maybe it had two builders, I don't know. But I don't see the point of the cylinder cover being such a tight fit on the studs. When the top cylinder cover is finally removed, I see something very interesting. The cylinder is bone dry, not a drop of oil to be seen. When I attempted to make this engine run on compressed air, I pumped lots of oil into the steam chest before starting, and all of this blew out of the exhaust port, which was a bit of a puzzle, and in fact none of it went into the cylinder. I've never seen such a dry cylinder. All this tells me is that the valve is wrong. The oil is blowing straight from the valve straight to exhaust. So we'll look at that in some detail shortly. And the first thing to do is to remove the steam chest cover. A bit simpler this time because it was only held on by four nuts, one at each corner. So I'll have a quick look at this valve. What I'm doing here is rotating the flywheel to watch the valve go up and down. And it's not going up and down at all well. It goes up and down, but yes, I see that. But it's not uncovering the port at one end and it uncovers the port at the other end, so the valve isn't in the right place. This would not explain why all the oil got blown to the exhaust. What I need to do for that is remove the valve chest and have a look at the valve itself. As you can see here when I shine a light on it, the port opens at the top but doesn't open at the bottom, so this is not a good state of affairs at all. With most of the engines that I work on, I never have the drawing. I just get the engine and I have to figure it out. But with this engine, my good friends at Blackgate's Engineering actually are now selling the Clarkson range of castings, so I'm sure if I ask them nicely, they'll let me have a cursory glance at some of the drawings. I'm removing the pin now that holds the valve rod clevis to the expansion link. This threaded part that goes through the clevis has been machined from a piece of bar, so there is not a hexagon at the other end, and I don't know why. So I have to use a pair of pliers to unscrew the pin, and I don't like doing this really. It would be more sensible to either have a hexagon, or at least a flat, to get a spanner on. With the steam chest removed from the engine and in my hand, it's obvious what's wrong here. The valve should be free floating on this crossbar, and it's not, it's stuck to it. The valve should literally fall off this crossbar with the steam chest in this position, but I'm having to struggle to remove it. The nice little hand wheel, complete with its threaded shaft, will need to be removed. This is all a bit wobbly. I'm not very happy with this mechanical arrangement. I'll look at it in detail. But for now, it's time to start removing the connecting rod. So I'll undo the nut at the bottom. Fairly self-explanatory. I don't need to go into detail. Just watch it happen. I take off this nut and I do not drop it on the floor. And I put it carefully in a box for later use. And before removing the bearing top caps, I think what I'll do is go back to the top of the engine and I'll just slacken off this small Allen grub screw because I don't want to have the crankshaft in my hand and think, oh dear, I've forgotten to slacken off this screw so I will not be able to withdraw the shaft. Even though the shaft spins fairly free around this fitting, when I remove the grub screw, it doesn't come loose. So back down to the bottom. I'm now removing the top caps from the main bearings. Very simple, you've seen me do this many times on the other builds. This engine does not have fully split main bearings. I don't know whether this is to the drawing or not. It's just a bearing around the shaft that's got a slot in it. And the way it's mounted, I don't know how any oil could possibly get to the bearing because there's no way through. I will address this. Can you see the slot in it? That, I would think, should be at the top maybe, but then it wouldn't clamp up tight. So a hole needs drilling in the top or something needs machining. I'll think about that when the engine goes back together. I have of course seen this many times before, and sometimes you think, oh this must be a good engine, with nice tight bearings, the oil that I put in the oil cup is lasting a long time, it's not just running through the bearing. 
it's not running through the bearing because it can't get through the bearing. So this is something worth checking if you're doing an engine rebuild. Always make sure that there is a small hole through the bearing to allow the oil to contact the crankshaft. This lubrication problem doesn't apply to this engine because it's never actually run. As far as I can see it's never done any running at all. The bearings are quite a good fit in the plumber block. The crankshaft is now carefully removed, complete with flywheel and put in a safe place. I will look at this assembly shortly. In this clip I'm removing the gudgeon pin from the small end of the piston rod, which is a bit of a rattle fit anyway, and the way it's fastened to the engine is a bit bizarre. It's sort of a round piece of metal with flats milled on it, so I'm holding one end in a pair of forceps and the other end with a spanner. I think I'm probably going to make a better arrangement than this. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.